ankles. They're pivotal for any upright movement, from a casual walk to an intense squat. When they stiffen, our movements suffer. So where do we begin to fix them? Gray Cook, a renowned physical therapist, had it right when he said, we need to do mobility first because that's how we got here. We didn't show up doing side planks in the crib. That's our focus today. I'll uncover why our ankles tighten up and how to reclaim that childlike mobility you once had. Now, just like me, you probably need some compelling reasons to invest your time and effort into something. That inner drive usually comes from understanding the real benefits that you stand to gain. When it comes to enhancing your ankle mobility, it's no different. So let me lay out why taking the time to improve your ankle mobility is a worthwhile investment. The crux of the matter is, every movement we make is goal oriented be it a leisurely walk from point A to B, a fast paced run, a deep squat, or a leap over an obstacle, you don't stop to ponder the mechanics. You set your goal and your body maps out the course. When joints like your ankles are healthy, it allows for a broad range of motion, which gives your body a great deal of movement options. We call this coordinative variability. This capability provides two primary advantages. Firstly, it enhances performance, giving you the versatility to excel in any situation. Secondly, it allows you to tread the path of least resistance. In other words, the route least likely to result in injury. So consider the act of squatting. With good ankle mobility, we gain the capacity to choose the most efficient and effective method to perform the movement given the circumstances. Now, let's envision the same scenario with tight ankles. Rather than enjoying a spectrum of movement options, your ankles would feel restricted, blocked at certain ankles. Your body would then be forced to improvise, which often leads to compensations elsewhere. For instance, your foot might rotate outwards much like a duck to avoid the tightness, causing the foot arch to overpronate and collapse. This effectively turns the foot into a makeshift second ankle. Such compensations can lead to a flattened foot arch and potentially exacerbate issues in the knee and lower back. Mix in countless repetitions and perhaps some external load and you're brewing a potent cocktail for injury. This second point concerning injury mechanisms and prevention is what truly fascinates me as a sports scientist. Injuries are the primary roadblocks limiting our progress in physical endeavors. So my mission is to uncover and share the strategies that help us navigate these hurdles. The good news is that by focusing on the correct things, we can make significant strides in preventing injury. So to address the issue of tight ankles, we'll begin with the low hanging fruit, that's identifying the main causes which are relatively easy to fix. Following that, we'll delve into the more active steps you can take using the variety of mobility drills that we'll provide. There are three primary reasons why ankles become tight. The first is due to habitual use of shoes with raised heels. These types of shoes cause the ankles to plant our flex, which causes shortening of the calf muscles at the back of your legs. Because we spend countless hours each day in these shoes, the calf muscles gradually adapt to the shortened state until it becomes their default resting length. The solution? Opt for shoes that have no elevation in the heel. These are known as zero drop shoes. Remember, Poison is a question of dose. High heel shoes can be worn on special occasions without causing issues, but they certainly shouldn't be your everyday choice. The second cause of chronic ankle tightness lies in weak feet. Let's understand this concept through a spring model of the foot and ankle developed by the University of Calgary. In this model, the smaller springs symbolize the minor foot and ankle stabilizing muscles, while the larger springs represent the more prominent muscles surrounding the ankle joints, such as the calf muscles. Now, if the feet are weak, those smaller muscles can't properly stabilize the foot and ankle complex. This leaves a greater burden on the bigger muscles, especially the calf muscles, for stability. Overworking these muscles leads to chronic tightness, in turn restricting motion through the ankles. It's vital to remember that our feet and their arches form our primary line of stability. They're the foundation of our entire body. So if we can't establish a solid foundation, how can we expect anything above it to function properly? 
The primary solution to this problem is through the adoption of minimalist barefoot style shoes like the ones we have here from Origo. The flexible zero drop soles in these shoes encourage full movement across the 33 joints in each foot, which stimulates the intrinsic foot muscles and progressively strengthens them over time. In fact, a recent study found that by simply wearing minimalist footwear for six months increased the strength of the foot muscles by nearly 60%. Shoes like these also feature an anatomical toe box design that keeps all your toes in their proper alignment. As you can see in the side-by-side -side comparison of my toes in the Origos versus a regular pair of shoes. This unrestrictive toe box allows your toes to activate the attached muscles more effectively, which further enhances their strength. These features make Origo shoes an ideal choice for enhancing our foot and ankle function. That's why we've partnered with Origo for this video. If you want to grab a pair of these highly functional shoes, hit the link in the description where we've included a discount code just for you, our viewers. All right, before we dive into the ankle mobility exercises, let's discuss the final factor contributing to ankle stiffness. That is a simple lack of movement diversity and variability. Let me explain. If I were to move along a diverse landscape with varying terrain, my ankles would encounter numerous scenarios that challenge their range of motion. This kind of diverse movement is crucial to maintaining joint functionality. This variation is in contrast with the flat and uniform terrain we often encounter in our developed environments. In these modern landscapes, our ankles never have to push past a certain degree of movement. And without this regular challenge, one eventually loses the capability. It's the simple principle of use it or lose it. So to overcome this challenge, we need to explore various mobility drills that prompt the ankles to utilize their full range of motion. We'll provide mobility techniques for the ankle joints in a flex knee position, which aligns well with squatting type movements, and an extended knee position, which correlates with more upright movements, such as walking and running. This way, we'll cover the ankle's diverse movement capacity. Let's start with the assisted deep squat. The deep squat is a fundamental pose used by children to rest and to pick items up from the floor. However, with the widespread use of chairs, the squat has become redundant. The consequence is that by the time we reach our teens, many of us have lost our ability to smoothly transition into a deep squat without resorting to poor compensations like spinning the feet outwards, dropping the chest, rounding the spine, or rising onto the toes. Most of these compensations stem from tight ankles. Restricted hips can also contribute, but that's a discussion for another video. Be sure to let us know in the comments if you're interested in a video on hip mobility. So the squat drill I'm about to demonstrate aims to help you reclaim your squat by forcing your ankle joints into full range dorsiflexion with the help of an upright support. The upright support serves as a leverage point to help you temporarily overcome the limitation tight ankles place on your body's capacity to get your butt close to your feet. In many cases, this bit of help is all someone needs to achieve a perfect deep squat. However, if your feet still tend to spin out or your heels lift from the ground, you may require additional assistance with heel wedges. I found these basic ones on Amazon that are adjustable to three different heights and made from a non-slip material. I'll drop links to them in the description. Once you've managed to perform this drill properly, the next progression would be to try the single leg variant. Start from the assisted squat position, shift your weight onto one leg, and wrap the non-supportive leg around the supporting foot. With most of your body weight now balanced on one foot, begin exploring the various corners of the joint to locate any areas of tightness. Once you discover a tight spot, focus there for a while to help promote change in that specific area. You can also use the contract relax technique which involves tensing all the muscles in your supporting foot for three seconds, then relaxing them while simultaneously drawing your body deeper into the restricted region of the joint, aided by the upright support. The main mistakes to avoid are losing ground contact with your toes or allowing your knee to deviate inside your foot. Now that we've mobilized the ankle joint in a flex knee position, it's time to shift our attention to mobilizing the joints in an extended knee position. An ideal mobility drill for this purpose starts with placing the forefoot of the ankle you want to mobilize on a raised platform, 
like the heel wedges we used for the assisted squat mobilization. If you don't have heel wedges, a book will serve the purpose. The next step is to position a box chair or ladder directly in front of and to the outside of the targeted leg. This setup facilitates body rotation when you step onto the platform with the opposite leg, thereby creating a rotational torque through the targeted ankle and foot. This action supinates the supporting foot, which aids in lifting the arch to ensure that the ankle joint is properly aligned during the mobilization. With the heel of the back foot firmly planted on the floor, shift your body weight forward through your hips by squeezing your glute muscles until you feel a stretch in the back of your heel and calf. If you also feel a stretch in the front of your hip and quad, then you have potentially identified a hip restriction, which you may need to address in the future. To intensify the stretch, apply the contract relax technique. Press your toes down as hard as you can, then relax and simultaneously move your body weight further forward through the ankle joint. Repeating this contract relax technique will help gain additional range of motion in the ankle. But be sure to keep your toes of your targeted foot rooted into the ground at all times. Increasing the slope under the targeted leg can further intensify this mobilization. However, ensure you keep that supporting knee extended. Bending the knee will introduce slack into the system and reduce the effectiveness of the exercise. With these new tools in hand, you're on the path to regaining the childlike mobility you once had. If you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely love our other content. You can check it out here and here. See you there.